Well, in last week's video, I went through some of the calculations that I use when I'm building wheels to get equal spacings between the spokes and to get good symmetrical wheels. Well, generally when I put the spacings on the fellows, I try to remember to go back and place them onto the spoke spider, the wheel spiders, and make sure all my calculations are correct. Well, in this week's video, I had a couple extra wheels to do, and I got in the process of drilling out some of the spoke holes, and I remember that I had forgotten that step. Word to the wise, don't take anything for granted. So I went back and I laid the fellow onto the uh, spider, the hub with all the spokes in, and I had some of my holes drilled and I realized that as I lined up my holes, the last three or four spaces were not coming out right. So I went back to my calculations. Some of you think I do this all in my head. I don't do it all in my head. I do take advantage of calculators. But I had miscalculated a number. And it came down to just a fraction of an inch. Actually, it was about 3 30 seconds. And it was a little over a, a sixteenth. And I want to show you just what that sixteenth of an inch off adds up to be. When you have 16 spokes in a wheel and your numbers or your calculations are a sixteenth off, Cumulative, by the time you get down to that last spoke, that last spoke is one inch off. So right here when I'm taking 36 and a half and multiplying it times pi to get the circumference, this is the number that I came up incorrectly with. And I didn't catch it until I actually stopped and put the fellow back onto the spokes to double check. It's just a word of caution that I try to remember but this time I was part way through the process before I did. So I'm going to show you how this all adds up. I already have five holes drilled for five spokes, but I can make this adjustment and still have the end spokes right out by the joints come out correctly. So I started out with seven and a sixteenth and I need to move it to seven and a strong eighth. And you can see the first hole doesn't seem like it's that far off. But we'll begin to see that as we add these together, how this sixteenth of an inch starts to accumulate. And we'll see at the end how far off we are. So by the time we get down to the last number eight hole, 
we're five-eighths of an inch off. But I can make this adjustment in the last three spoke holes to where it'll still be a functional wheel. You know, the adage is, the mark of a carpenter is how well he hides his mistakes. And I'm not free of mistakes by a long shot. Well again, in last week's video, I showed the process of sticking these fellows onto the spokes. But there's been a few questions in the comment section that made me realize that I really didn't do a lot of explaining, even though I showed the process. Well this wheel here, I'm going to have 39 and a half inches outside diameter. And since the thickness of the fellow itself is an inch and a half, times two, I have an ID inside diameter of 36 and a half. Well, the spacing on the ID 36 and a half is measured out at the shoulder distance of the spokes at the base of the tenon, not the tip of the tenon. The tip of the tenon is going to be at the 39 and a half inch. So the end of the spokes are too wide for the inside diameter. That's why we have to pull the spoke into place right here to make the OD of the end of the tenon fit the ID of the fellow. And another dynamic that has to occur is that the 36 and a half ID has to be stretched so that it will fit outside of the 39 and a half inch OD of the tip of the tenons. So this fellow is an inch and a half square basically and it's light enough that I can just do this as I'm hammering it onto the spokes. So I am pulling it in when I'm hammering each spoke but I'm pulling it out with my left hand and I'm maneuvering the spoke with my left hand into the holes. And whether we're assembling a fellow that is light like this fellow or a three or four inch wide heavy wagon fellow in a steam bent half, the principle is applied exactly the same for both. And that's what I'm going to show you here in a bit, how the exact same principle works on a heavy wagon fellow. So for this second half of this wheel, I'm going to leave it speeded up just a bit. And I think you can see the process where the right side is not outside of the spoke ends yet, but you can see it relax and start to move out. I'm pulling it out with my left hand as also I am pushing the spoke into place. And another thing you'll notice is that the first spoke is beginning to come down on the shoulder by the time I'm ready to get the fifth spoke started. This process allows the fellow to come down into its natural position and also allows the sixth, seventh, and eighth spoke to come closer and closer to the hole each time. And when I trim my fellow ends before I begin assembly, I leave them long on purpose. I would much rather have extra, which allows me to make the final finished sizing with a handsaw than being too short. That is really frustrating.
So I have a set of wagon wheels here that are going to get half bent fellow sections, not the common sawn two spoke sections that you've seen me put on so many times before. This fellow is actually about a inch and a half too small in diameter, which complicates the process, but the process is still the same. This has a three inch tire, so it's going to have a two and three quarter inch wide fellow. And if you watch closely, just like the light buggy fellow, this is going to go on exactly the same. But because the wood is so much heavier, I have to use mechanical advantage. But fundamentally, the principle is the same. So you can see with the help of this spreader bar, I'm getting close to taking the ID of this fellow and making it close to the OD of the ends of the spoke tenons. It doesn't have to be exactly the OD, but it has to be close in order to start the process.
So I think you can see how the process is the same. What seems at the beginning like it is no way it'll actually ever fit, when it comes down to it, it actually will go. So once again, thanks for watching.